What? Uh, are you sure you want to be shooting that? Yeah, it's the Hudson. We got a red dot on it. We've got plus two base plates. It's awesome. Yeah, but they're out of business now. If that thing breaks, you're like you're screwed. Oh, yeah, that's right. They went bankrupt, didn't they? Yeah, completely. That doesn't make the gun that cool, though. No, it's a super cool gun. It's still a cool gun. You yeah. know, when we started shooting these on in range, people were talking to us about. They they said, "Well, why aren't you shooting the Hudson anymore?" Well, it wasn't that we weren't shooting it anymore. It's that we always are shooting different guns at the match or yes. in different events, and so. Um, the Hudson never became not cool. It just became, we're doing something else now and talking about other topics and nothing had changed with the Hudson to talk about something new, right? I really like them. Yeah, I do too. And we, yeah. the gun's always been a very interesting design with an interesting trigger and this amalgamation of Glock and 1911 type features and ergonomics. And we uh, worked with our buddies at K-Arms to put on a cool red dot slide and to get plus two base plates to increase the magazine well capacity or magazine capacity. One of the things I was always said was deficient was magazines. Like, yeah. When I went to a serious match and wanted to score well, as much as I liked the Hudson, I still didn't have my 33 round mag. And I know that sounds goofy to guys, but at a match, that matters. Yeah. And so that was one of the things we could never get around. But now that they've gone bankrupt, what does that mean? Well, actually, just in the last couple of days, we did see a really interesting press release from KE Arms. Yeah. Now, obviously, we know that KE has been working with Hudson because they're the ones who did our red dot cut, our front sight. You know, the, the extended front sight. Well, it turns out KE was actually one of the major contractors for Hudson. Yeah, so interestingly, I don't think a lot of people get this. When you're a company like Hudson trying to make a gun, you're probably not machining every part of that gun. In fact, maybe you're not machining any part of that Most gun. Most of the time, you're not machining anything. So what you do is you subcontract out to a whole bunch of different machine shops and manufacturers. Right. K Arms being one of them. Right. And I believe that they manufactured or, or milled the slides. Yeah. Um, and in addition to the slides, apparently they were one of the companies, or the company, working on the H9A, uh, developing the aluminum frame. Which is part of the reason I think Hudson took a dive bomb. Yeah. Yeah, oh. if we, I think the short version of why they went bankrupt is they were doing reasonably well then at SHOT Show, what, a year, year and a couple months ago. was it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they announced the H9A, but they did so too early before they were able to actually ship them. And you know, a lot of people went, oh, that's awesome. I'll just wait for that. You and you, you included in that. Me actually. included, absolutely. So, yeah. so, so we were early on the H9 bandwagon because we initially, SHOT Show 2017, we went to SHOT Show and this was the hype. Yeah. The Hudson 9 was the hot thing. It was absolutely the hype. And legitimately, we went to the booth thinking this is going to be dumb. Yeah. Because when things are hyped that much, they almost always never live up to the hype or can't. And then you were quite cynical, and I was cynical too. And then we went there and met people and met Lauren and saw the gun and then shot it. And we're like, hmm, I'm not sure. This hype might be legit. Yeah. And then we spoke to them more and we understood their design principles and what they were trying to do. And then the hype seemed to be real. Mm -hmm. And then we were one of really one of the earlier channels and people to get our hands on an H9 and shoot it in practical environments. And it turned out this gun's really rad. It's yeah. got a lot going for it. Yep. Now, it had teething problems. Any new gun to the market that's brand new, early adopter on anything, guys, whether it's software, computers, guns, cars, there's going to be issues. Yeah. And little things happen, like maybe parts weren't hard and right or whatever. And that's when a gun matures, that's when those things get figured out. Right. And so that's something that happened to Hudson. But that wasn't what got them. They announced that H9A. You shot it. Everyone shot it. And they're like, oh, my gosh, it's much lighter and still feels awesome. Yeah. So the steel frame guns literally just sat on the shelf. They just stopped selling. Yeah. Er yeah, so no cash flow. Uh, this is partly speculation. We have we have some good evidence to back this up, but it's not like I've actually seen Hudson's books or anything. Of course, of course. Uh, and I have not talked to Sire Lauren Hudson no. um, in actually quite some time. Neither um, of us about have. this. We would love to talk about them, hmm? uh, talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> We'd love to talk to them. Well, we are uh, talking about them, yes. but we would love to talk uh, to them about this when as they're well. in yeah. a position that they're willing to do so. Um, One that, can it, okay. that's an open invitation, but. Um, in the meantime, what's actually pretty cool here is it looks like KE, according to their announcement, and we've seen KE do a lot of cool stuff in mm -hmm. the past, is stepping up to look into actually providing support for existing H9 owners. Um, certainly, I, they're looking at making aluminum frames and selling those to people who already have a Hudson, um, and then potentially making other parts, certainly I'm sure offering, continuing to offer slide cuts for them. And it sounds like they want to be the go-to source for parts and maintenance and upkeep and keeping Hudson's, people who bought Hudson's, there's many thousands of them out there, mm -hmm. and KE wants to be the, the company that will keep those guns running. Well, at least the, 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 the glue that brings the community together, because right. they've been a huge component, uh, proponent and part of the, the H9's yeah. development and progress. And so there's going to be a lot of other manufacturers that probably have bags of spare parts laying around. 
for yeah. example. There's firing pins and extractors and ejectors and all that stuff's sitting there ready to go to make more H9s. Right. But because the H9s are no longer being made, those parts are just laying in a box. So they're working to try and find all of those different manufacturers and bring them into one resource so yeah. that you can go to them and get the part that you might need to keep your H9 running. And then on top of that, they still have slides that they're talking about and like milling red dots are still providing services like that potentially. They still have those plus two base plates if you want to enhance right. your, your H9. Yeah. And they're talking about if it's viable and they have to investigate this, this is not a, a, a definite yet, but providing an aluminum frame for existing H9 owners. Right. So you could augment your gun and get that cool lighter gun through KE if they're able to do that. Yeah. And to be fair, this isn't just altruism on their part. Mm -hmm. They are, according to them and various court filings, they are owed several hundred thousand dollars in work and development and parts for Hudson that they haven't been paid for. And they've got a bunch of their own stuff sitting and they'd like a way to recoup some of that, that cost. Of course. Now, so, so there's two ways into that. One, support the community that supported you. Mm -hmm. They bought the H9, therefore supporting you and your manufacturing processes and your manufacturing company, but also supporting these people that already exist, have existing guns. These guns don't suddenly become worthless guns or useless guns just because the company's gone out of business, but it does make them, it does make it concerning when parts and replacement parts right. or augmentation or things are going to be in the air. Right. So KE is trying to address that. Now, you mentioned creditors. So when you go bankrupt, you have to essentially, you have all these people you're in debt to that made firing pins or made slides or whatever, and they have to liquidate the assets of the company and try and get some of that back. I don't know how that works. There are really. a couple different kinds of bankruptcy. Yeah. There is the, the more common one, which is just a reorganization, mm -hmm. which is basically a legal structure where you can put all pending credit, you know, debts and credits on hold while you reorganize the company so that it can find a way forward to meet its obligations. That's not what Hudson is doing. Hudson is doing like the the nuke it from space option mm -hmm. of all of Hudson Manufacturing's assets will be sold, probably at auction, um, and and the money raised there will be distributed, I assume proportionally, but I don't know the exact mechanism, to the creditors, and that's it. And if someone buys Hudson's intellectual property or patents, those people hypothetically could manufacture guns again. That's something that's not that uncommon in the history of firearms manufacturing. Uh, but we have no idea what will happen there. Um, and until it does in a few months, I think. I don't know what exactly the time frame is for this. I know there's an initial deposition uh, in the middle of April, um, but where it goes from there, I don't know. And what their assets are and the value of their assets and how many of them have and what's going on right. with the LL Prox, we have no idea. Yeah. We don't know. So that's conjecture on our part. That's how that would work. But that still leaves a lot of manufacturers and creditors in the lurch. Right. And KE wants to help deal with that for one degree. And I'm sure a lot of the other manufacturers do as well, but also provide support to the existing community. Yeah. In that regard, we also understand there's a lot of people that bought Hudson's that had little, like we said, these are new guns that had teething issues and they shipped them in for repair. Yeah, that's probably the biggest outstanding issue in my mind is guns that are sitting at Hudson. I, I am hoping, I am assuming. Sitting that, somewhere. We don't even know where. Hudson well, as a company, like their FFL and all, who knows what's going on yeah, with that. I, yeah, I, in the strongest possible terms, hope that those guns get returned to their rightful owners. Um, I don't think they would be at risk of being sold as assets of the company because they're not, but no. I don't know what sort of legal limbo those guns could end up in. And I hope that someone at Hudson uh, takes the, the effort to ensure that those guns all get returned to their owners. Even if they get returned in an unrepaired state. Like, yeah. I mean, it, which I it, assume they would be. If you point. have to give the guns back to the original owners in a Ziploc bag of parts, please do so. Because yeah. then those people can work with people like K Arms or others to get their H9 back up and running and have a gun that they put a lot of money. These were not cheap guns. Yeah. So put a lot, put their investment, at least put, have a functional gun on their shelf again. Yeah. And with KE and other people working to keep the, lot, the the platform alive, even if they get a bag of parts from you back with the frame and all that stuff, at least they can get their gun running again. Yeah. And that's something that has to happen. That's, that is the most important thing because, um, man, this is not, the gun community is not the hugest thing in the world. Yeah. And you don't want to alienate all your people. And you certainly don't ever want to leave customers that were loyal to you buying a high-end quality product in the lurch. Yeah. So I think that's where we're at at this point. Stay tuned. K Arms has put out a press release. There's more coming. The, 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 the liquidation, maybe other things to learn about. They do want to know what people's level of interest is. So if you are a Hudson owner interested in spare parts, red dot slides, uh, potentially an aluminum frame, get in touch with KE, either through their email or their social media channels. Mm -hmm. they're, they're on Facebook. They're on pretty much everything. They're on everything. Yeah, yeah but Facebook, um, you can email them, all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so get in touch with them and tell them what you'd be interested in, and um, hopefully that will help drive the process forward. On that note, please don't use Instagram for Messenger. 
<laughs> that's the worst place. Facebook, email, that okay. works. Instagram's kind of hard sometimes. But yes, please get in contact with them. Let them know what you think and what you might want to do with your Hudson or where your situation is. And hopefully we as a community can come together, keep these cool guns to get, uh, functional. Uh, they're now kind of maybe collectible someday. They will be. Maybe. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean that they're not good guns anymore. It just means that the support is dubious and we have to figure out what we're going to do together to keep that alive. There's yeah. still people using computers from the 80s right yeah. because it's fun and retro there's no reason this platform has to die if you're a current owner so reach I'm, out go ahead i'm told there are people out there still using like discontinued guns from 100 years ago that's absurd nonsense okay. but please if you're interested please contact k arms and that's our update about the hudson right now i know a lot of you have asked and we've had a lot of hudson on the channel so this is what we know at this point and i'm sure we'll have more to come in the future thanks